stuff out of the way. What's up guys, here we are again with another video. If you subscribed last week, thank you so much. To be honest, I didn't even think the, the video I made was gonna get 50 views. So the fact that we're getting close to 500 now and the fact that I have 16 subscribers, thank you guys so much. Uh, quick plug, if you haven't joined the Slack community, please do it. Uh, this video is actually a response to a conversation that we were having in Slack this week uh, about just my approach to the signal chain within my Helix, um, which actually, quick shout out. Shout out to Richie. Uh, I'm gonna link Richie in this video description. Uh, Richie asked, uh, or I said, we were talking about just different signal chain stuff and he said, it'd be cool maybe to have a Helix rig rundown what amps, caps, pedals you're using and stuff. I also downloaded a patch you made off of the Helix form uh, and found it interesting that you do amps last in your chain rather than before delays. Any thoughts on why? Yes, and this is the video for it. I'm gonna explain all of that and then talk about how this is specifically for uh, worship music. This is not necessarily the signal chain I would use when I'm doing stuff in the studio or if I'm playing in a cover band, things like that. So without further ado, let's get into it. The easiest thing I think will be for me to switch over to screen sharing to kind of show you the signal path on the computer. Um, and then we'll just sort of go from there. First things first is I have a gain block here. Um, it's a 4.3 dB boost. That's predominantly for when I'm using my Strat. Uh, it's just not as hot as my humbucker guitars, which is 95% of what I'm playing uh, on Sunday mornings. The Strat really only gets used for a few songs um, that we have in our rotation, and I use it a lot in the studio for recording. Um, so anyways, moving forward, this EQ block, uh, this is here, I, I occasionally use this. This is not an always on thing. It's just got a 1K boost, uh, very slight amount. That's a preference thing, depending on the room I'm in. Uh, sometimes I feel like it just needs a little bit more cut. All right, next up is the Minotaur. Here's my settings. This is my first stage of gain. I do uh, stack gains. That's my approach to overdrive. Um, I've done the, um, like setting a switch to boost up the drive on the amps. Uh, that's cool too, just not my thing. Um, so, uh, Minotaur, then we go to the Timmy, the Tima. Here's the settings for that. Um, this is typically uh, used for most choruses of songs, things like that. It, it's honestly um, my go-to sort of sound would be the Minotaur team of Stacked. All right, uh, next is the 808. Here's the settings for that. Uh, I use this pedal um, predominantly when I'm just doing like ripping solos, It's which is not mostly most of the time on Sundays. Uh, this is, I use this more for our Wednesday night kid services that I do, uh, where there's a lot more freedom to just have a good time on some Young and Free songs. Uh, however, um, this is the overdrive I'm using mainly with the Strat. So I'll use, I'll stack the Minotaur and the, uh, the Scream 808, uh, for just big, courses and lead lines it's it's a darker sound uh, and it's something I'm familiar with I've used 808s my entire life of playing guitar uh, so I'm just really familiar with that sound and I tend to find that it doesn't work great for humbuckers in my opinion all right excuse me next up is the volume um, I prefer to have drives before uh, my volume pedal similar to what I was doing when I had a pedal board Okay, next up is the 70s chorus. This is not assigned to a switch, and I'll switch over and show you the board in just a second. So that's why I'm moving a little bit quick through here. Uh, this is a specific sound for specific songs, not consistent. Uh, the vibrato, I do have that. I use this a lot. Um, it's, it's a sound that I like. It's not for everyone, uh, but I use this on a lot of my lead lines and things like that. Uh, the I've been saying things like that a lot. That's kind of annoying. Anyways, um, the next thing is the uh, trim. This is again, not assigned to anything. This is not something that I use often. 
but I but I do have it just in a Sunday morning sort of setting in case I need it. Uh, next is the tape delay. This is a quarter note. I use this for solos. Uh, I use this for if you know if the song calls for it, like uh, that Christian Stanfield song, um, always. Um, next in line is the transistor tape with a dotted eighth delay, and this is my main delay setup. I'll show you this. Whoops, wrong thing. Um, so here's my settings. Nothing crazy. Um, you will notice I run things a bit wet. Um, I, I'm not a huge fan of the delays on the Helix. I, I find them to be not very musical compared to what I was using before, which is a time factor. Um, so to be transparent, and I was kind of holding this out for another video, there is a piece of me that's thinking about putting my time factor back on my board. Uh, we shall see. I'm gonna play with, um, I'm gonna play with some of the delay stuff on 2.5 and we'll, update you from there but anyways that's my main thing right there okay finally I have a simple delay uh, on a dotted eighth I mean I, I'm sorry an eighth note I use this only for um, Phil Wickham stuff um, so like the verses of this is amazing grace that's how you get that sort of bouncing rhythmic delay um, next in line is the particle verb this is the only reverb I use on the helix right now however um, I'm excited to dive into the newer stuff and play with those reverbs. Um, I use this for swells. Uh, I have the dwell set at 23%. The mix is at 100. Um, so what I'm doing with this is I'm usually using my fingers and playing really gently and it creates this super washed out verb sound uh, with my big sky on a plate setting. And I find that to be a super awesome pad sound if you don't have a keys guy who can play with you. All right, uh, next up is another gain block. This is not assigned and I use this so rarely that I won't even talk about it with you. All right, finally, um, this is uh, my effects loop for my big sky. And it is stereo. And then we go straight to the amps. Um, nothing crazy here. I love AC30s. Uh, for worship music, I just find them to be the, the best thing. Uh, the Matchless on here is good. I actually own a Matchless. Um, I've had several and I'm pretty familiar with the way they sound. Uh, it, I don't really like, um, I know I'm gonna get like crucified for this. I, I'm not a huge fan of the DC30 sounds that are on the Helix. Uh, that is a total preference thing. So I'm sticking with my AC30s. Um, and these are, um, I'm using, uh, they're, they're the same settings on each amp. The only difference is I'm changing the cabinets. Um, so I, um, I'm using a two by 12 silver bell on one of them. And I'll show you, you can just see these really quick settings. Nothing, there's really nothing fancy here. This is what I would normally do when I'd run stereo live. Um, and then I've got a 67 condenser on this. I go back and forth, sometimes I use a 57. Uh, it, it just sort of depends. Um, but typically this is what I'm doing. Really quickly, I just thought it might be helpful to show you the board uh, in terms of the layout of these effects. Um, so obviously tuner, tap tempos over here. Okay, so just as I was showing you on the computer, uh, first button is the Minotaur. Uh, the Scream is actually my second button. Uh, and then the third button is the Tima. Um, next is my reverb, which always stays on. Um, and then I've got the simple delay down here, uh, particle verb here, the bubble vibrato. My delays are right here. And then finally the boost is over here. Uh, so just wanted to show you in case you were wondering visually uh, how I have those things laid out and you guys know over down yonder is the big sky in the Cali 76. So you have just seen my signal path. Let's talk about it for a second. Why do I run all of my stuff in front of the amps instead of running delays and reverbs behind it? Um, so this, the quick and simple answer to that is, uh, this is what I prefer. Uh, so I know it's not groundbreaking, but here, here's the deal. When I first switched to Helix, 
um, my goal was to try to replicate what I was already doing live. And what I was doing live was I had a stereo rig uh, with a matchless in either a Vox or um, maybe a Marshall. I did that for a little while as well. Uh, and I had all of the effects in front of the amps. Okay, so I found that it, I found that the easiest transition for me was to just do that initially. And then I told myself, you know, I'll explore from there. And that's what I did. So I've got two AC30s, I've got two different sort of uh, cab setup and sound setup, and then I ran everything in front of it. To me, that's the way that um, my guitar should sound for a worship environment. Now, when I'm doing studio stuff, yeah, I, sometimes I put the delays behind the amps, especially on like high gain stuff, things like that. It can get muddy. Uh, the same thing with reverbs. And uh, if I'm in like a cover band scenario, the same thing applies. Like if I'm doing a Van Halen cover or something, I'm not going to run delays in front of the amps. It just sounds too muddy. Uh, but for worship music, these, this is what everyone's doing live, right? So whether you like Jeffrey Cundy or Michael Pope or Bobby Strand, uh, they're all running stuff in front of the amp. That's what sounds uh, right to our ears because that's what we've been hearing. Um, so. It's not groundbreaking, it's just it's just what I think uh, is the best approach for, for Worship Music Live. If you're interested in downloading this patch, uh, I will link it in the description below. Um, if you wanna try it out, I'd love to hear your thoughts, opinions about it. Um, hopefully I answered the questions for the guys in the Slack community along with maybe any of you who saw my initial pedal board rundown. If you haven't seen that, I'll link that in the description below as well. Uh, thank you guys so much for the support. I will continue to do this. I'm excited about some of the content that's coming out and some of the conversations we're going to get uh, into in the next few weeks. So for my first 16 subscribers, thank you so, so much. I know it, it means a lot to me. It really does. I, I genuinely thought nobody would really care. Uh, I, I was doing this really for, for my own enjoyment. Um, so thank you for the support. Thank you for everyone who's viewed these videos and I will see you guys later.